So this is a hard question, and the key insight here is that if we move that to here, then we can uh, write this as a perfect square. Now, why? what would make one think about that we have to move the two? Well, it has to come from this form. You'll note that this is uh, a plus 1 over a, or we can also think of it as square root of a plus 1 over square root of a, because when you square that, you will get a plus 1 over a plus 2, because when you multiply these twice, their product. Now, of course, we have a minus here, so the only difference is that it corresponds to this identity. And this one is an important one, comes up in different forms. And so that's really the reason to bring that to here, which means that this would become 2 to the power of x over 2 plus 1 over 2 to the power of x over 2 square. And uh, actually, this would be minus, as I just mentioned, because that's a minus. And that's equal to minus of x minus 2 square. So now that's a perfect square. That means this will be greater than or equal to 0. That means minus x minus 2 square is greater than or equal to 0. Since that's always positive, and we have a condition minus of a positive number, the only way this condition would be satisfied is if x minus 2 square is 0. So that's kind of the really the logic, which means that the only value um, of x that would satisfy this equation is x equal to 2. Now the question is, if we plug in x equal to 2, do we satisfy this equation? So this constraint came from the fact that this has to be, this piece is positive. Now if we plug it back into the original equation, you will find that's 0, and this, this 2 squared plus 2 to the minus 2, which is really 4 plus 1 fourth, is not equal to 2. So even that number that would potentially make that equal to 0 doesn't satisfy, and that means that there are no real valued solutions. The answer is B. So that's kind of the most efficient way of doing it. Now, obviously, it's not everybody's going to be able to see that right away. And I want to share with you what are the possible directions you could go, which I did um, go in those directions. And and you should also, when you're practicing with these questions, is to try those different things because the mindset of sort of approaching the question in different ways is what eventually improves your problem-solving skill. So the first thing was we start with that piece here. I mean, you can stop watching the video at this point because I'm just showing you the different ways or directions that I went. So multiply by 2 to the x both sides. And this would become 2 to the uh, 2 times 2 to the x minus 2 to the x, x minus 2 square. And then plus 1, minus 2 times 2 to the x. So just many different ways to go about it. So this was 2 to the x minus 1 square. Now at this point, I fail to see that this is positive, that's positive, and since that's negative and this is also positive, the only way this is going to happen is if that piece is equal to 0. So... Um, that that clearly I wasn't able to see that. So the other direction that I took was to say, let me add 2 to both sides into that original equation. 2 to the x plus 2 to the minus x plus 2, and then 4 minus x minus 2 squared. Now, what's the logic of that? Well, I'm familiar with the a plus 1 over a square identity, and thinking that that would help me square that because this is really 2 to the x plus 1 over 2 to the x plus 2. So this becomes 2 to the x over 2. So instead of doing it minus, which is the better approach, I ended up doing it this way. And that's when I noticed that that has to be positive, which means I end up with this inequality uh, less than or equal to 4, which means that x minus 2 falls between minus 2 and 2, which if I add 2, x is between 4 and 0. So that just gave me a range, but didn't really help me figure out 
what the possible values are. I tested x equal to 4, which doesn't work. So, I mean, the reason I'm sharing this with you is that these are all the kind of the tangents that you can go into. And obviously, if you end up here, you don't really have the luxury of taking several attempts at this question. And so it's probably better to just kind of sidestep this question. Um, and I just wanted to share the reality of sort of the things that happen with these harder questions. And I think you should be comfortable, or at least when you're practicing, make sure you are very well versed with these identities. You can do these manipulations because even just that would help you in other questions. So don't try from that. Uh, but yes, this is a hard question. And the way I showed you here is the most efficient way. But as I said, it, you may not be able to uh, spot that right away. But that's what we're targeting. So the answer is B.